let's draw the bending moment diagram for this frame. So here we have four reactions. So two for each pin. And three equilibrium equations to solve for them. So therefore we require an additional equation being the compatibility condition. And what we're going to do is find the horizontal reaction at the roller first. So we're going to release the translation in the horizontal direction. And therefore, we superimpose two cases, which have a pin on the left and a roller on the right. And on this first case, we apply the external loads, so two kilonewtons, and a lateral load of one kilonewton. So this causes a deflected shape that looks like this, where we have a displacement of the roller in this direction, which we call UA. And for this second case, we apply our reaction that's unknown in the left direction, and that gives a deflected shape of the frame that looks something like this. So we have UB going to the left. And note that before and after deflection, the members remain perpendicular to each other at the joint because they're rigidly connected in a frame. So here we have a horizontal reaction at the pin as the roller cannot resist the horizontal load. So that's equal to the external load of one kilonewton. And if you take a sum of moments about the pin and roller, you'll find that the vertical reaction at the pin is zero and the vertical reaction at the roller is 2 kilonewtons. And now to draw the real bending moment diagram, we cut the column. So the bending moment is 1 kilonewton by the perpendicular moment arm, which is 2 kilonewton meters. And the magnitude of the bending moment in the beam is equal to that in the column at the joint. And on this side, by well, Newton's third law, you're going to have two kilonewtons acting on this beam. So two multiplied by the moment arm of one meter gives two kilonewton meters at midspan. So the real bending moment diagram looks something like this. Now to find the deflection UA, we're going to apply a virtual force in that direction of that deflection. So therefore virtual force by moment arm gives a virtual moment of 2 kilonewton meters. And by symmetry, you have the same virtual force on this side. So again, force by moment arm gives a virtual moment of 2 kilonewton meters. And the magnitudes of the virtual moments at both joints in the beam are the same as those in the column. And therefore, the volume between the real and virtual bending moment diagrams give that displacement. So for the columns, we have real by virtual. By the length of the column on 3EI, which gives the volume between those two triangles being a pyramid. And for the beam, we break these regions up into two. So for the first region, we have real by virtual by the length of one meter. And here we have a rectangle and a rectangle, so the volume between those is a rectangular prism. And for the next region, we have a triangle and a rectangle, so we have a real bending moment by a virtual bending moment by a length. And the volume between a triangle and a rectangle is half that of a rectangular prism. So this term is 8 on 3 EI. And this one here is 4 on EI, or 12 on 3 EI. And this one here is 2 on EI, or 6 on 3 EI. So therefore UA is 26 on 3 EI.
And now for the second case, the real bending moment diagram is obtained by multiplying this reaction force by the moment arm. And by symmetry, you have the same reaction on the other side. So you have 2R on the other side. And the magnitude of the bending moment in the beam is equal to that in the column on both sides. So we have bending moments of 2R at both joints of the beam. Now to obtain UV, we draw the virtual bending moment diagram by applying our virtual load in the direction of the deflection, which gives a virtual reaction on the other side of 1. And therefore the virtual bending moment diagram looks the same as the real one, except the magnitude of the virtual moment is 2, because we have the virtual unit load by the moment arm of 2 metres. And therefore UB is equal to the volume between the real and virtual bending moment diagrams. So on the left column we have 2R by a virtual moment of 2, by the length of the column on 3 EI, which is the volume between two triangles. And for the other column, we have the same expression, so we just multiply this by 2. And for the beam, we have 2R by the virtual moment of 2, and that's multiplied by the length of the beam on EI. So that's the volume between two rectangles, which is a rectangular prism. So for the left term, we have 16R on 3 EI. And for the right term, we have 8R on EI, or 24R on 3 EI. And therefore UB is 40R on 3 EI. And using our compatibility condition, UA plus UB is 0, because there's no displacement at a pin. So we have 26 on 3 EI, minus 40R on 3 EI. And that's equal to 0. So these terms cancel. And solving this equation, we get R is 0 0.65, and that's in kilonewtons. And note that here, we took R as acting to the left, so therefore this reaction points to the left. And by horizontal force equilibrium, the reaction at the pin will also point to the left, and have a magnitude of 0.35 kilonewtons. And now we can superimpose the real bending moment diagrams from both cases to obtain a final. So on this side, we have 0 plus 2R. So that would be 2 by 0.65, or 1.3 kilonewton meters. And the bending moment in the beam is equal to that in magnitude as the column in the joint, so that's also 1.3. And here we have 0.35 kilonewtons by the moment arm of 2 kilonewton meters, so that would give 0.7 kilonewton meters. And the bending moment in the beam is equal in magnitude to that in the column at the joint, so it's also 0.7 kilonewton meters. And at mid span we have 2 kilonewton meters minus 2R, so that would be 2 minus 2 by 0.65 which also gives 0.7 kilonewton meters at midspan. And the bending moment diagram in the beam is piecewise linear. Please subscribe, like and comment to help me reach more students.